The governor of Tokyo, Naoki Inoshi, is stepping down after a huge political scandal. This guy was actually key in successfully getting the 2020 Olympics to be in Tokyo as well. So he played a major role in that. So what's this big scandal, uh, you know, that's making headlines? Well, he accepted a $500,000 donation from a hospital tycoon. That's it. That's it. I'm done. That's the whole scandal. Nothing else. Not like he accepted the money and then fucked 17 hookers on camera and then smoked crack with Rob Ford. None of that. Nope. Just accepted $500,000 from a hospital tycoon and a donation. And here's another great uh, part of the story. What did he do in return for the money? Nothing. Nothing. Now, he has the capability, or I should say he had the capability as governor, to approve building projects for hospitals. So there was the potential that, you know, he might have approved a, a wild hospital. Oh, boy, did you really just put a hospital there? Oh, you wild man, you. He could have done that. He didn't do it. And that's it. That's the end of the, that's the, end of the entire scandal. That's it right there. He, had to, he stepped down for that. Now, what would this scandal be called in the United States? Tuesday. This is what happens on any day in the U.S. with any politician, at any level, right? I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. The local politicians are the, less, the least corrupt. The state are slightly more corrupt, but they're still not that corrupt. Once you get to the federal level, oh, my God, they're all bought and paid for. Uh, how, people in the House, to a lesser degree, people in the Senate, oh, my God. They're like, they... they they probably make it rain on themselves at lunchtime. Like you fucking see Chuck Schumer and Harry Reid and John Boehner twerking while one of them, you know, does, throws the dollar bills at them. These guys, they're showered in Wall Street money. They're showered in donations from all over the place. So as I was reading the story, I was thinking to myself, man, I, I don't, your average American, they have a feeling that our system is beyond fucked up because Congress has a 9% approval rating, 9%. The fucking British crown, when they were ruling us, when we fought a, a revolution against them at a higher uh, favorability rating than the 9% that Congress has, okay? But they can't tell you specifically what's going on. The American people don't know specifically why Congress does such a bad job and why we're all so pissed off. Well, th this is the answer right here. The answer is that President Obama had to take, you know, millions upon millions of dollars to get reelected and then now that he's in office he's just simply serving back those interests and not legislating for the american people Mitt romney same thing he would have been in the same position all the senators same thing i mean i always go back to the same example because it's so cut and dry it's so black and white and it proves the case ninety one percent of americans wanted a universal background check bill for gun purchases it's a simple thing just, oh make sure he's not fucking psychotic or a member of the taliban uh, or had four felonies on his uh, record previously. Is that so much to ask? Just do a simple background check real fast? Uh, and we all wanted it, but it didn't pass. Why didn't it pass? Because guess who sets the policy? Guess who controlled the policy? The NRA and the gun manufacturers. So the people who make money from selling guns, the people who should have the biggest conflict of interest, who should be the last people setting the policy in the U.S., they're the ones who did set the policy because they paid all the Republicans to block the legislation in the past. And the Republicans just did the bidding of those, those companies. That's how politics in the U.S. works. When you want to see why a bill passed and why another bill failed, just look at how much money each side of the debate got. And it's, it's almost perfect. It's almost 100% of the time. Maybe there's a fringe example here or there for some ridiculous outlier reason, but it, almost 100% of the time, that's what happens. So $500,000, I mean, it's amazing that in the U.S., so this guy could take $500,000, do nothing in return, and, you know, it's a scandal and he's got to step down. In the U.S., we have politicians taking millions of dollars from ExxonMobil, uh, giving it to their PACs, right, which then they then use and keep. But then they uh, vote on a corporate welfare check to give them $4 billion in subsidies every year. But they're the most, one of the most profitable corporations in the world. Why do they need the subsidies? And then they say, oh, it's for research and development. We need to incentivize them to do research and development. Maybe being one of the most profitable corporations in the world is incentive enough. You don't need to give them $4 billion extra dollars. I, I want to use that excuse. I, I don't feel like waking up in the morning. Give me a billion dollars so I can do it. I just need incentive. I just need incentive to do my own research and development for the show. 
No, but see, it's such bullshit. It's such in our face. The corruption is so much more brazen than even this case where the guy had to step down in Japan. That shows you how fucked up our political system is and how much the main... We're not going to ever fix any problems until we get rid of the main problem, which is the cancer of our political system, the legal bribery that goes on. So how do you get rid of it? Well, I, you know, I feel like I'm plugging this too much today, but it's, it's a good cause and it's certainly necessary. Uh, the Young Turk set up Wolfpack. It's wolf-pack.com, and it, that's how you get money out of politics. It's a constitutional amendment that says uh, you get rid of corporate personhood and money does not equal free speech. And it's time, man. We haven't passed a constitutional amendment in a long time. Our generation is sorely lacking on that front. Let's get this bad boy done, because after that gets taken care of, then we can actually seriously tackle the problems that we face.